Good evening, high school football fans. This is the High School Football America radio show for October 26, 2017. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. And down the stretch we come. Just uh, three more weeks to go in the regular season out here in Southern California. We wrap things up in a couple of weeks as the regular season comes to a close and we go into the playoffs. And uh, lots of playoffs starting up around the country this week. It's a fun time of year if you're still playing. Of course, some of the states, uh, like Indiana, where everybody gets invited into the postseason are playing. But uh, anyway, we're uh, we're into that fun time of year. If you're playing uh, in, in one of those states where it gets a little cold, you want to be playing when there's a chance for snow, playing for that uh, championship trophy. We've already handed out all the gold in Alaska. We mentioned last week that uh, the small school and uh, medium school, which are now known as Division Two and Division Three, handing out their hardware, Soldatna becoming the six-time state champs in Alaska, winning the Division II title. And uh, Barrow, uh, the Whalers from north of the Arctic Circle, winning their first-ever state championship. They are the Division III champs. And then last week, it was Bartlett winning the Division I championship. So congratulations to uh, those three champs there. And we're going to have a lot of fun football to cover here over the next uh, eight weeks uh, to nine weeks of the high school football season as we uh, head into November. Yes, the uh, the leaves are changing uh, in the Northeast, and that means the importance of the games are changing as uh, we go into the postseason. Let's talk about the High School Football America Top 100 that is created with our proprietary algorithm for the second consecutive week. Two top 10 teams in the Top 100 tasting defeat. Former number 5 St. X from Ohio being beaten by number 38 St. Ignatius and uh, number uh, 8 Miami Central in South Florida losing to former number 38 Northwestern. That's what shook up the latest rankings done with our proprietary algorithm. We always release our national rankings on Sunday, and Northwestern made a huge jump. Uh, if you remember back in the day when uh, the new uh, Top 40 hit came out, you know, the 45s, for those of you that remember 45s, a billboard would say, it's up the billboard chart with a bullet. Well, the Bulls come up the Top 100 with a bullet, jumping 27 spots. Thanks to their 21-7 win uh, over Miami Central. They are number 11 in the latest rankings, and uh, Central falls to number 12. But the Bulls are playing really very well right now defensively. They're really rock solid. Uh, This one was never in doubt. They had the 21-0 lead late into the uh, fourth quarter, and uh, Central scored at the end there. But the Bulls are looking mighty, mighty fine. Now, St. Ignatius, give them a lot of credit. They bounced back. They were shocked by Archbishop Moeller a couple of weeks ago, Moeller from Ohio, and that dropped the Wildcats from number 9 to 38. They could have packed it in against St. X, but this was a rematch of the 2016 Ohio Division I State Championship game won by St. X in double overtime, and, uh, well, the Wildcats got it done. They doubled up St. Xavier by a score of 28-14. Xavier falls from number 5 to number 26 this weekend. Uh, another big one for St. Ignatius as they come down the stretch uh, getting ready for the playoffs there see if they can get back to the state championship game and change that silver for gold number 18 St. Edward the arch rival of St. Ignatius in Northeast Ohio there the next team up as they close out the regular season with that annual battle and that one should be a dandy we will have six head-to-head matchups this coming weekend in the top 100 let's go through them and talk about them a little bit in Texas DeSoto the reigning 6A Division II champs climbing one spot this week from 6 to 5 they will take on Duncanville in the Battle of Unbeatens district championship on the line there that one should be a fun one coming up on Friday night don't forget we've got some games already underway in the High School Football America Top 100 here on Thursday night you can follow all of those four games live by going to our scoreboard that is powered by ScoreStream, the top 100 scoreboard, plus our state-by-state scoreboards for all the Thursday night games. 
Go to highschoolfootballamerica.com, click on scores, and that's where you'll be able to watch the games as they go. Hey, if you are a, a fan of a certain team, why not promote them by downloading the ScoreStream Score app? Uh, it's a lot of fun. You just go into uh, Google Play or the iTunes Store, download it, and then once you get out of the game, you can you can update the scores, let everybody know what's happening, put live video up there, uh, or ad video, I should say, and add photos. It's really great. Maybe you can be featured in the uh, photos or video of the week that ScoreStream does. Check them out at scorestream.com. In Indiana, well, the playoffs got underway last week, but the 6A uh, playoffs wait a week, so everything syncs up for the state championships at the uh, Lucas Oil Dome there in Indianapolis. 6A playoffs underway. They're always good because you get a lot of rematches in the Metropolitan Interscholastic Conference. The MIC winner this year was Ben Davis. They are number nine in the High School Football America Top 100 as they climb to number nine this week. And they get uh, a game against the team they just beat three weeks ago in the MIC. They beat Lawrence Central by a score of 42-7 during the regular season and now come Coming up tomorrow night, it will be the Giants taking on LC in the first round of the playoffs. That's the sectional playoffs there in Indiana. In Florida, Miami Central dropping, as we said, four spots to number 12, looking to rebound. They take on Carroll City, another big South Florida matchup. Carroll City moving up 10 spots this week. They are ranked number 71 in the High School Football America Top 100. Beltway battle in D.C. and Maryland. Good Council, number 88 in the High School Football America Top 100, hosting Gonzaga, number 86 in the Top 100 this week out of D.C. Gonzaga on top, along with St. John's in the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. Uh, if Gonzaga gets the win and St. John's wins this week, that means that uh, first place and the top seed in the postseason will be at stake in two weeks. But first, Gonzaga, the Eagles, they can't look by Good Council. Good Council has been playing well. They're only loss in conference play against uh, St. John's so uh, depending what happens on Friday night we could have uh, you know maybe a three-way tie atop the WCAC conference standings the final inner top 100 game in the state of New Jersey of course we can't have a week without New Jersey having a big battle there number 47 DePaul taking on number 99 Number 99, Pope John the 23rd, coming off a tough 20 to 19 decision loss to uh, number 31 Bergen Catholic on Saturday. Last two weekends, the Lions, who broke into the top 100 three weeks ago, have had a couple of tough defeats, taking on, as we said, Bergen Catholic, the loss by one. And then two weeks ago, they lost by six points, 20 to 14, to uh, St. Joseph Regional out of Montvale. So the Lions hoping to get back in the win column this week against number 47 DePaul. Pope John hanging in there because of those two quality losses in the strength of schedule at number 99 in the High School Football America Top 100. Two new teams breaking in to the national rankings, uh, spending some time last couple of weeks uh, on the bubble. Actually, uh, Folsom out of California has spent the better part of the year on the bubble. Uh, they are at uh, 96 this week as they bust into the national rankings. And Miami's Columbus High School out of Florida comes in just in front of the Bulldogs at number 95. Let's quickly go through the uh, the top 25, the teams that we haven't mentioned so far. Modern day top team in the land. They've been there since uh, early on in the season. St. John Bosco began the year preseason ranked number one, but modern day, who uh, knocked them off just a couple of weeks ago, has been number one since early in September. They have a game against Orange Lutheran in the Trinity League. Two more weeks to go out here in Southern California. Modern day looking to close out the regular season. They're favored in the last two, and then they go into the very, very tough CIF Southern Section Division I playoffs. IMG Academy, another quality win, knocking off former number 36 East out of Utah, the defending two-time state champs uh, from Utah East. Uh, had this one close at the break, at the half. It was 22-19. Uh, the Leopards actually had a couple leads in this one. They had it at 12-7. 
and 1915. It was 22-19 IMG at the half. IMG Academy number two in the land. Idle this week. They get Hoover out of Alabama, the very tough Hoover Bucks coming up in a couple of weeks for the Ascenders. Allen, number three in the high school football America rankings. They've been high all year long. Perfect 7-0, and getting McKinney this week. Trinity, uh, 10-0. They closed out the regular season. They're number four in the high school football America top 100, holding that spot from last week. They are idle before getting into the 6A playoffs in a couple of weeks, meaning next week. Uh, we mentioned DeSoto, number five in the land, coming up against number 77, Duncanville. Uh, DeSoto up a spot this week, as is South Point. The Stallions out of South Carolina, a perfect 9 0. They've got York coming up this weekend. American Heritage out of Plantation, Florida. They move up two. They're a perfect 6 0, 20 game win streak. Hallandale up this week for uh, the Patriots. They are number seven in the High School Football America Top 100. Number eight, St. Joseph's Prep out of Pennsylvania. They are 7 and 0. Oh, Archbishop Ryan, their foe this week. The Hawks moving up two spots. They finished number eight in the nation last year. Quite a climb for the Hawks. They are soaring. They started the year, uh, I think they were number 66. They were mid 60s in the High School Football America preseason top 100. Number nine, Ben Davis up four spots this week. We mentioned their clash with number 97, Lauren Central, coming up in the Indiana 6A playoffs tomorrow night. Coming up four this week, Corona Centennial. We were supposed to have Cameron Pitcher, the uh, great linebacker for the Huskies on the show. Uh, couldn't get that all wrapped up. They had some uh, some late practices this week due to the heat out here in Southern California. Anybody watching the World Series, seeing that 100-degree temperature game one for the Dodgers and the Astros, know how hot it was out here in Southern California. So the Huskies going late. Uh, Cameron Pitcher, the uh, leading one of the leading tacklers on the Huskies last year. Everybody always talks about Corona Centennial's great offense. They do have one. They're over 50 points a game once again this year, but the defense is darn good. And uh, next week we will talk with uh, Cameron Pitcher, the leader of that defense on the High School Football America radio show. We mentioned Northwestern at number 11. They are idle this week. Number 12, Miami Central taking on Carroll City, number 71. Bishop Gorman continues on cruise control. They are in Nevada. That means they don't have many challenges there. Sierra Vista is their opponent this week. Gorman, number 13 in the High School Football America top 100. De La Salle, they are idle this week. They are 8-1. and one. They are number 14. They will get a challenge next week in their season finale against undefeated San Ramon Valley, one of the top teams in California, ranked in the High School Football America California Top 25. For those of you not familiar with what we do, our algorithm does not only the national rankings, we have seven regions, we have top 20s in the regions, and then we have our state-by-state -state rankings. All can be found at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Number 15, Brentwood Academy. They hold at 15, a Solid shutout victory over Montgomery Bell Academy last week in Tennessee. Bingham closed out the regular season. They start the 6A playoffs tomorrow night against Cypress in Utah. Uh, the Miners number 16 at 9-0. and St. Francis Academy holds at 17. They've only allowed 22 points in eight games. Mount St. Joseph, their uh, combatant this week in uh, Maryland. Number 18, St. Edward, as we said, taking on 25, St. Ignatius. And Katie is still undefeated in Texas, 5-0. Holds at 19. Tompkins coming up this week. Union out of Oklahoma, a perfect 8-0 is number 20. St. Thomas Aquinas out of Florida. They are 21. St. John Bosco from California, 22. Another Southern California team, Mission Viejo, uh, number 23. They're idle this week. The Diablos then get unbeaten. Well, as long as San Clemente wins this week, that'll be a, a battle of unbeatens coming up in the regular season showdown in the South Coast League here in Southern California. St. John's College, we mentioned about them out of D.C. They're 6-2, number 24 in the land. They're looking to get by uh, Archbishop Carroll this week and go into that clash against Gonzaga with at least maybe a piece of the title if good counsel can upset Gonzaga or then they will uh, fight for the outright title no matter what. Uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, St. Ignatius again, number 25, taking on number 18, St. Edward. You can check out the entire High School Football America Top 100 by going to High School Football America. Dot com. Hey, don't forget to follow us, follow us on all the social media platforms. Facebook, that's uh, facebook.com forward slash High School Football America. Our Twitter handle is HSFB America. And our Instagram handle is High School Football America. Tag us, tweet us, do whatever. We like to interact with you guys out there. And don't forget, uh, on Friday night, once again, we're going to have Facebook Live cracking for you. The top 100 scoreboard show that we've... Uh, 
been having over, I guess, I don't know, it's now probably four or five weeks. It's been a lot of fun. You can tune in live by going to facebook.com forward slash high school football America. Hey, believe it or not, since we're getting close to the end of the season here, we've got some new jobs coming in, some openings already on high school football staffs across America. We uh, had a couple of head coaching jobs come open, one in Ohio, one in Michigan, and you can check out all of the jobs that will be coming more and more plentiful by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Click on the coaches job, uh, coaching jobs uh, tab, and you will see all of them there. It's very easy to use our database. All you have to do is put in the words you want, whether it's a state, a city, uh, a position that you're looking for. It's all going to be there for you. Very easy and very searchable. Brought to you by Crossover. And we're going to talk about Crossover and Echo 1612 in just a minute, along with our good friends at Southern Sport. Uh, if you want to um, uh, email us, please feel free to email your job opening to uh, Fisher at highschoolfootballamerica.com. We also have a uh, uh, another one that's directly for that, which is uh, job listing, or I'm sorry, job posting at highschoolfootballamerica.com. So that's the way you get uh, all your information up there on the coach's job board. And now time to talk about, uh, we already talked about ScoreStream, our great, great partner there, but we also want to talk about uh, Echo 1612 with their incredible technology that brings instant replay to your sideline, which makes you make today tomorrow's adjustments today meaning when the play is over you have them on your sideline show not tell it's the best way to help your team and give yourself a competitive edge chad cargill and company creating echo 1612 out of oklahoma coaches making technology for coaches it doesn't get any better than that they know coaches exactly what you need you can get to uh, echo and get that demo by clicking on our banner ad at highschoolfootballamerica.com get a free demo from crossover with a k crossover with a k by clicking on their banner ad they break down your game film for you unlike anybody else and by the way echo and crossover both have competitors out there but these guys do it the way it needs to be done they will give you great uh, game film breakdown quick and very very precise it will allow you to do what you do best which is coach instead of sitting there uh, you know cutting up your video and, and, and tagging and all those other things you have to do uh, crossover does it the best get that free demo by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com and clicking on their banner ad and also brought to you tonight by the good folks at southern sport who created the debris inhibitor razor players you know what it's like to get those pesky rubber pellets from field turf in your shoes how about if you could keep them out of of your shoes. Well, you can. All you have to do is go to tdirazor.com. That's razor with a U, R A Z U R, tdirazor.com. Put in the special code HSFA, which stands for High School Football America, and you will get a 30% discount on your order. 20 great colors. You can get your logo on these, and you won't have to get spatted up, you know, get all taped up and all that. They give you the great look of spatting without the high cost of tape. This is an American made product, machine washable. It's durable. You will not be be disappointed uh, by using the TDI Razor. Lots of uh, teams out there across the country using them to spiff up the uniforms. Check them out at TDIRazor.com. Again, use that special code HSFA to get that 30% discount on your order. All right, we're going to take our first break here, here from all of our partners. And when we come back, we are going to have the coach of Burroughs High School in Ridgecrest, California. Uh, on Sunday, a young lady, uh, Tina Marie, who... Um, uh, hit me up on Facebook. She sent me a, uh, a video and said, Jeff, you're going to love this. It'll bring tears to your eyes. I know you'll love it. And uh, I watched it. And what it was was the Burroughs. Well, it's the Burroughs Burroughs. Yes. Uh, Burroughs. I don't have to go through the spelling, but Burroughs like donkey uh, and uh, or donkey. I, I sometimes get told that my, my back east, uh, 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 what do you call it? Accent comes into play there. I guess I call him a donkey, but donkey. But a burrow. Uh, is uh, Burroughs Burroughs, and Ridgecrest is near a military base out here in Southern California. And uh, the, the, with all the kneeling that's going on in the NFL, uh, the, the young men on this team had some conversations. They weren't really happy with where things were headed in this country, and they decided that for their homecoming game uh, that they would all carry out American flags. And uh, they did that to uh, Lee Greenwood, 
uh, God Bless the USA, which was blaring out of the, uh, the PA system speakers. Uh, they held them during the national anthem, and then there were uh, two F-18s flying over top. It was a very emotional scene. The video that Tina Marie sent me uh, went viral uh, with our help, I guess, a little bit. And uh, they, uh, you know what, I haven't checked recently, but it was up over 5 million uh, views at one point earlier this week. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, we wrote the story, got to, uh, all kinds of good feedback. We really didn't have any negative feedback from the story at all. Most people saying, hey, congrats to the kids for what they did. Well, anyway, when we come back uh, from this commercial break, we're going to talk with Todd Mather, the head coach at... Um, Burroughs High School, and he's going to talk exactly what happened, uh, why this happened, uh, how it all came about. Uh, it's interesting, he's a, uh, a business owner in town there, and will also talk about uh, turning off the NFL games uh, on Sunday in his sports bar and uh, what, what's occurred as a result of that. Uh, we all know that ratings in, uh, across uh, the league are dropping for NFL games, and uh, Todd Mather uh, hoping that uh, some, something, a little piece of something that he really appreciates, which is uh, America and its military, was restored uh, last Friday when his uh, team came away with a hum- homecoming victory. We're going to even talk about that game. The, the Burroughs were a little outmanned, undergunned. They didn't even have their starting quarterback, but somehow maybe with the help of a lot of American flags uh, were able to pull through and, and pull out the, uh, the victory in their game against uh, Oak Hill. So anyway, we're going to uh, take our break, and when we come back, Todd Mather, you won't want to miss this interview. Uh, a, a great coach with a great perspective on what's going on in America and maybe how high school football can heal the divide a little bit. That story and a lot more when we come back. You're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, It's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, 
and for that extra Bigfoot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the debris inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover's service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can and see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K.com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2017, High School Football America is teaming up with USA Today High School Sports to give you great national high school football coverage and coverage specifically from here in Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. Well, if you were uh, watching highschoolfootballamerica.com on Sunday waiting for the top 100 rankings to come out, something else uh, came out before that and it caught fire and uh, little tiny Burroughs High School in uh, the high desert here in Southern California in Ridgecrest, California, did something pretty darn cool uh, for their homecoming on um, Friday night. And uh, one of uh, the, the fans there had taken some video. A lot of fans do, did it, but one specifically uh, hit me up on, on Facebook and said, Jeff, uh, I know you'll like this. Uh, take a look at it. And uh, the entire team, all of the Burroughs, that's their nickname, were uh, coming down onto the field car- carrying uh, American flags. It was wonderful to see. Uh, Lee Greenwood was uh, blaring, as I wrote, uh, through the the PA speakers there, uh, you know, uh, about America. And uh, it, 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 you know, they continued to stand out there during the national anthem, F-18s flying over top. And, uh, wow, the the story, the video itself that Tina Marie put out has had over, they've had millions of views. Let's just put it at this way. The millions and millions. And the head coach of Burroughs is Todd Mather. He is on the line right now to, uh, to talk a little bit about that night, what, uh, how it all came about, what it meant for the team and for the community. And uh, they, oh, by the way, they won. We're also going to talk about the Burroughs here and might even throw in Jeff Steinberg, the former former head coach there and my good friend now at Rancho Verde who who by the way Todd beat <laughs> earlier this year but anyway let's uh, we got a lot to talk about Todd Mathers on the line welcome to the show coach thanks for having me Jeff yeah, it's, it. it's going to be fun. Like I said, we're going to we're going to punch Steiny once or twice here at the end. But uh, let's let's talk about the, uh, the the videos and 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 what's happened. I as we started this conversation off off mic, uh, I was saying you're a little bit of a celebrity here. Uh, we hear the word going viral. This one video that specifically we put out has over has, I think three million at the time we're taping this. Um, tell me a little bit about the idea of why uh, you and the kids decided that at the start of homecoming. They they were going to enter the field with each and every one of them carrying a, a, an American flag. You know, it just, it started as just a, a topic with my brothers and I, um, that we've just been disappointed, uh, uh, with the, you know, what's going on across the country as far as the football and the national anthem. Uh, and they knew that, that, you know, I could have an impact, uh, with that. So, you know, I, I brought it up to the kids and, you know, asked them how they felt about what's going on in the country and, the way we've always represented the national anthem, you know, I showed him videos of, of the Rams and Jeff Fisher, uh, how he showed his players uh, how to respect the national anthem and the way they light up. 
and we've done that in my coaching career here uh, and the kids have always respected it and loved it they they love uh to see pictures of themselves during the national anthem the way they just you know military town the way we respect it and do it better than anybody else um in the heart and, and so uh you know we we talked about carrying American flags out. I asked my my players if if they would like to carry American flags out, and they all thought that would be the greatest thing ever. Um, so I, I told my younger brother that, and he said, "I'll buy them if you'll carry them." And uh, I said, "You're on. Players players want to do it, and let's get it done." And it was just a, a beautiful scene. You can go to highschoolfootballamerica.com. The video is up there. We're going to put up some other ones that I've seen uh, along the way. Uh, the, like I said, millions of views of this one now. I, I guess, you know, so you, you, you set that as the tone, but would you ever think, here we are on, on Monday when we're taping this, knowing how much publicity you guys have gotten, and I think it's going to be more and more coming uh, as a result of this. I know you had a TV station just now at your practice. I mean, I'm sure that's not what the idea was, right? So how do you feel that it has gotten this viral aspect to it? You know, um, that's not what we expected at all. We were (laughs) shocked and surprised by this because we we feel that this is the way it should be done, Um, and it shouldn't be a surprise to everybody. So it's... uh, it's definitely a shock to us. You know, our community um, is, is very patriotic. If you drive through our town, every light has a, a banner of a military uh, person in town that is uh, currently serving right now. Um, so the banners are all through the streets on the light post. We do Parade of a Thousand Flags uh, the weekend of 9-11 every year. Uh, close the streets down. A thousand people are carrying flags, walking through the the streets uh, and it finishes at the uh, city hall and we do a big ceremony there and a bunch of speakers. So it's a shock to us um, that it went this big, but obviously we love it. And we're hoping that, you know, the country will get back to respecting our national anthem and, you know, where it used to be, or I used to watch Olympians cry their eyes out when the anthem would come on and you'd be at home crying your eyes out watching and, you know, listening to Whitney Houston singing at the Super Bowl, and everyone in the stadium's crying and it's, it's, kind of when we're all most united and that's that's what we share with our players and that's the message they wanted to get out is you know have your own beliefs uh and we don't all agree even on this team we don't all agree with the same same thing during the national we all agree that this is the greatest country in the world and everybody has a fair chance to to live the american dream and uh but we should all be united during the national anthem. And that's the one thing we should all agree on is that we live in the greatest country in the world. Um, and we should all stand and respect the national anthem and the flag. And from there, root your team up. Yeah, no. Uh, we agree to disagree. You you said it so well. Todd Mather is on the line, the head coach at Burroughs. Uh, again, uh, check it out at highschoolfootballamerica.com. I wrote about this. I really stayed away from the kneeling stuff. And, and by the way, Todd, I, I, I have a buddy that won a, a gold medal, and I was there when he won it in the Olympics. And it, I, I don't know who was more emotional, him or me, but you're, you're right. The emotion of that, it's, it's, it, the, the message of, of, of the kneeling is getting lost, why they started it. And uh, as I said, uh, I wrote this. High School Football America is called that for a reason. Our logo contains stars for a reason we're red white and blue for a reason and uh just very proud of what you did there i mean that's that's for sure and i just wanted to kind of oh i i should also clear up i'm not the jeff fisher you mentioned earlier by the way i'm not the guy that used to coach (laughs) (laughs) but anyway let's 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 hop into a little bit of football here and uh you know i i I read in the 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 paper uh, your local paper there that you guys were a little undermanned you didn't have your starting quarterback i was wondering how the emotion of the start of the game may have helped you guys pick up a big homecoming win to get you to six and two this year tell me a little bit about that you know i think it was huge you know we lost our starting quarterback last week uh, in a big big game uh, and you know we're, we're out manned 80 to 100 pounds a man the homecoming game uh it's a team we've never beaten in in the school history <clears throat> and um you know the emotions were running high the stadium was there was tears as as we were hugging our players just from the the emotions of it all. And we came out and, uh, and stopped them three and out. They punted and about seven plays. We were in the end zone. Uh, we stopped them three and out again. They punted and about seven, eight plays. We were in the end zone again for a 14, nothing lead. And, um, you know, we have a tremendous defense this year. And I, I thought right there that, you know, they're going to have trouble scoring on our defense. Um, and we may have done enough to win right there. 
Um, sure enough, we, you know, later gave him an offensive touchdown. We, we, we fumbled in the end zone. They recovered it, but you know, we, we pull a big 20 to 17 victory out against a team who, you know, we're not supposed to beat. That's just wonderful. And let's get some of the, the names of the kids in here, too. Uh, some of the leaders on this team, I, I know the people around the country may not care, but it's important to me to find out. And that's what I do. I tell stories about small town football across America. So let's get some of those kids in there that did a nice job for you on Friday night and throughout the season so far. You know, we, we uh, Bryson Pippen, he leads the league in receiving. Um, I think he has 14 touchdown catches in six games. And, uh, He's five foot six, 130 pounds, uh, and we moved him back to quarterback. We told him this is where we need him. Uh, he scores ones out of every six touches, and so we thought, why not put the ball in his hands every snap? And again, he he was responsible for that second touchdown on a uh, on a bootleg off of our you know new offense. I should tell you that we put in a whole new offense in three days oh, uh, to get ready for this game. We're, we're a notorious throwing team, like Jeff Stein, where we throw the ball 45 times a game. Um, and I think we threw nine passes all game. Um, so being undersized, you know, we couldn't push him around and that, but we, we got it done. So Bryson Pippen played quarterback, played fantastic. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we moved our left tackle into the backfield. Brock Mather ended up playing in the backfield for the first time in ever in his playing career. Uh, and he's a senior, um, put in a, uh, a player that was a JV player to play left guard. Um, Nathan Gassetta did a great job filling in there uh, for us, uh, you know, on homecoming victory there, moved our left guard out to left tackle, uh, put a different number on our linebacker. Uh, he's normally number 44, Brandon Milner, uh, put 53 on him so he could <laughs> sub in and help out at the guard position, which he hadn't played all year. So the kids just stepped up and, and did what we asked and, you know, filled in at different positions. And that's just what they've done all year is, is play hard for each other and, and play wherever we ask them and, and do what what they're asked to do for their team. Talking to Todd Mather. Very unselfish player. It's very unselfish. It sounds like it was a, a perfect storm. You caught lightning in a bottle on Friday night. Uh, talking to Todd Mather, the head coach at Burroughs High School. You've been the, the head guy there since, I think, 2011, I read. But a longtime assistant there. And I mentioned at the top uh, Jeff Steinberg, who's the uh, head coach at uh, Rancho Verde. A good friend of mine when we moved out here. I think he was the second coach I met. Uh, we've got a long track uh, history. He's still trying to punk me for a, a joke I played on him back in 2012. We won't bring that up but I'll just mention a little bit there so he knows I, I haven't forgotten but anyway uh, Jeff was the head coach there and you you coached under him and this year uh, uh, st- I don't know if it's student teacher or not or how it was but when you're an assistant the assistant beat the head man what was that like that had to be uh, a, an amazing feeling for you you know it, it was amazing and, and Jeff it was a student teacher you know, I learned a ton from Jeff Steinberg um, you know, coming out of college, playing quarterback in college, thinking that you might know it all. And then uh, realizing that, you know, I'm glad I got to coach under Jeff Steimer because I had no idea how to be a head coach until I, I coached underneath him. Um, you know, we did a lot of offensive stuff together. Uh, we create kind of a fancy offense and some weird terminology. Um, we studied the, you know, huddle and no huddle offenses to get other pros and cons. And we both decided to go no huddle. Uh, obviously because we went no huddle when we were together. Uh, but, you know, beating him was, was probably the, you know, the staple in my coaching career um, because I never thought it would happen. You know, we're not supposed to beat uh, Jeff Steinberg in Division Three Rancho Verde when we're a Division Nine team. But, you know, kids kids played hard and we're up for that game. And, uh, you know, and we, we just played lights out. And, you know, that week, I don't know if you knew Jeff, but we, we one of our coaches had a very, very – tragic car accident um, where the passenger died and and he was the driver and he's still not not back with us to this day um and so emotions were high going into that game um you know i had to call my players out of class at 8 30 in the morning because it happened at 5 30 on its way to work and just you know meet with them in the library we had guidance counselors principal athletic director in there and just everybody crying and hugging Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, he wasn't supposed to live and this and that. So it was, it was an emotional game. And, uh, you know, we came out on fire and, uh, and we really beat him up. So 
you know, I'd like to send that message out to Jeff. We really beat him up. <laughs> oh, trust me. I, I, I will get some message to him. But again, I'm still looking around the corner <laughs> for that punk back for 2012. We're talking with Todd Mather, the head coach at Burroughs in Ridgecrest, California. Again, if you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful start to their homecoming. Lee Greenwood uh, singing uh, God Bless the USA. It's blaring. You've got the kids coming out with the flags. And I guess, you know, the next question as we kind of head toward the end of this interview is, you know, you are, you know, in charge of these young men. And, and 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 leading them and we all know what the the coaching profession is all about these days it's not just being a coach sometimes you're a father a second father or sometimes a primary father so it's been a big week i'm sure the kids are seeing you know like you just had some television cameras there and all that they, they they're going to read this around the nation um what do you do how do, how do you kind of bring them back or do you let that emotion grow uh, off that big homecoming win what are, what are you going to do to them this week you know, uh, I just spoke to them uh, for the first time here about 20 minutes ago and just, just told them that, you know, we, we, we got to get back to, uh, to our normal schedule. Um, you know, it's amazing what they've done. It, it's impacted the country, uh, something we weren't expecting. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm proud of them. And uh, uh, it's a great thing that they've done, um, and, and we're excited about it. But, you know, it, it does give us energy. You know, as you know, you you've you've studied the psych psychological part of it um and how it affects you when you think negatively as to positively and you know the kids are excited um uh, about it and uh you know that they they got the their belief out there and they're you know made a huge impact across the country made a lot of people cry made a lot of people excited um and so it's it's we will continue to bring out american flags at our home games uh, I don't think we'll continue to be able to get flyovers, but that sure would be nice. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we are going to ride this momentum, you know, and finish out this year on a, on a big note and, and get a good playoff uh, seed. And, and, you know, I still think we're, we're one of the top two teams to, you know, to win Division Nine this year. Well, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. I've got one more question for you. We talked about the kids and all that. I mean, has this week changed you? Um, you, you have a very strong feeling like I do about not kneeling for the national anthem and all that. Uh, how has it changed you personally? You know, it's, uh, it's restored faith in humanity for me, you know, getting to see uh, uh, how many people really are disappointed with what's going on. Um, you know, I, I told you myself that we've, uh, my brothers and I own a sports bar with 28 TVs and we, we ourselves chose to not show the NFL anymore uh, at our place. And that, you know, it's, it obviously impacts your, your money line. Um, but it's been a, it's been a success, you know, um, since we decided to do that. Um, but you know, my grandfather fought in the, in uh, Korea and, uh, Normandy and, uh, he was underwater demolition team, a frog man. And uh, so I know he'd be rolling over in his grave with what's going on in the country. So I'm just, it's impacted me a lot to, to be able to, to bring people together and, and hopefully restore some positivity and let these troops know that we really do care for them here. And, that, you know, it's not all uh, negative press. Uh, you know, there's more of us that, that still do believe that this is the greatest country in the world and, uh, and want to want to make it great again. I can't add to those words. Uh, well done, uh, Coach, and uh, continued success that you can build on the momentum of this. And uh, uh, look forward to uh, to watching you guys and see what you do when the when the, the when the fifteen minutes of fame goes away. That's that's when it's going to be interesting, and, and hopefully the boroughs uh, get the the opportunity to play for maybe a state championship down the line. So thanks for joining us on the show and taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Very welcome. Taking a break. We're coming back with more. This is High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline 
Ride system works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors, and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the debris inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's Crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. Jeff Fisher back on High School Football America as we wind things down tonight. I um, want to thank all of our partners that you just heard there. Uh, didn't hear from uh, ScoreStream, but I want to recommend that if you're going out to a game this weekend, download the app at uh, the in the iTunes Store or at Google Play, and uh, just have some fun when you're out there. You can keep up with the scores, let everybody know how your favorite team is doing, how your favorite player is doing, uh, post videos and photographs. It's really a lot of fun. Go to ScoreStream. Dot com. also want to thank uh, USA Today High School Sports. Once again, we're partnering with them, uh, giving them specific coverage here from Southern California. Look them up at USA Today HSS. Dot com. Mentioned this at the top of the show. Uh, there are five games in the uh, High School Football America Top 100 tonight. You can follow them all live along the way. All you have to do is go to highschoolfootballamerica.com, click on scores. It will drop down to Top 100 scoreboard, and you can follow the games. Big one in Ohio tonight, uh, Trotwood Madison, which is uh, just racking up the points. I think uh, they come into tonight's contest with uh, 506 points being 
being scored, only giving up 103. They're well over 50 points a game. So we'll uh, be able to see what the Rams are able to do tonight against a very good Wayne Warriors team. You may remember the team from Huber Heights there in Ohio began the season uh, ranked highly. Uh, they were in the top 50, the preseason top 50. On national television, though, Pine Richland just kind of destroyed them, uh, knocked Wayne out of the national rankings. Trotwood Madison trying to make a name for itself. Coming into the game, ranked number 64 in the High School Football America Top 100 that is created with our proprietary algorithm. Uh, in Texas tonight, uh, Ryan, Denton Ryan, looking to remain undefeated. They take on the Coyotes of Wichita Falls, Falls uh, Denton, Ryan ranked number 32. Follow that game, powered by ScoreStream at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. In the state of Tennessee, Oakland looking to stay undefeated. They are number 84 in the national rankings, taking on Warren County, the Pioneers. And we've got a couple of games in Nevada tonight, starting at uh, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, the Gales of uh, Bishop Gorman looking to uh, see if they can improve that number 13 overall ranking in the nation. They take on Sierra Vista and number 75 Liberty. The Patriots taking on Basic, the Wolfpack. Uh, everybody uh, hoping once again that uh, Bishop Gorman and Liberty uh, meet up for the state championship. I may remember last year, everybody thought Liberty was going to have a shot at that one, but uh, Gales blew him out. We'll have to see what happens this year, different year, no Tate Martell, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, reminder to everyone out there, I know you may still be... Um, you know, playing your games, but if, if your your season has stopped and you're looking, whether you're an administrator or a coach, and you're looking to fill your staff, please feel free to email us at jobposting at highschoolfootballamerica.com or fisher at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Uh, you can post your job up on High School Football America's football coaching job board. Uh, everybody loves the job board. It's a quick and easy and it's just so easy to search and find exactly what you want. If you're a math teacher and you're looking and, and they have the fact that they're looking for a math teacher in the uh, in the job description, that will pull up. I mean, it's real easy to use. Well, ours is the best out there. A lot of places are putting you know, the coaches' names up there or the school's jobs up there, I should say. But yeah, it's not really searchable. We have a searchable database. We've been doing it for four years. We've had thousands upon thousands of jobs going up there. Please feel free to search us on a daily basis because it's updated daily, uh, sometimes a couple of times a day, depending on how they come in. Or you can email us if you do have a need for your staff. Don't forget uh, to follow us on Facebook tomorrow night, our live scoreboard show on Facebook Live. Go to facebook.com forward slash high school football america just like us there and then you can go to it and watch or if you don't see it live you can always watch it later we did the uh, got a lot of good views on the uh, top 25 uh reveal that we did last sunday on facebook so uh, however you want to do it make sure you like us and make sure you come back and watch our live video there follow us on twitter at hsfb america as we close in on 6900 followers there love to interact with you guys hey if you tweet us we don't ignore well, we will ignore you if you're rude, but otherwise, we love interacting with you. And uh, just uh, send us your, your photos or your video, whatever you have there. You want to promote your favorite player, feel free to do that. And uh, just a reminder, I, I think we said last week we we're going to have Cameron Pitcher on from Corona Centennial. We will have him on next week. Uh, got a little hot out here. The practices for the uh, number 10 team in the land moved to late, late in the afternoon after the sun went down, so we weren't able to get Cameron onto the show, but he's the uh, the linebacker, the top linebacker on the number 10, 10 team in the country that everybody always talks about offensively, but they play really, really good defense, so look forward to that interview on the show. Hey, if you missed any of the High School Football America radio shows, there's one way to catch up, and it's real easy. Just go to High School footballamerica.com click on radio show you will see each and every show we've ever done they're all free they're all downloadable for you there at highschoolfootballamerica.com anything else let's say you know let's one one final point here i want to thank uh, todd mather uh the uh the head coach at Burroughs High School here in Southern California. I, I, I wrote this when I did the story about his team bringing out the American flags last uh, Friday at their homecoming game. I, I've stayed away from really talking anything about the kneeling in the NFL and, and had just a couple of people
people that pointed out to me, Jeff, you know, um, don't be anti Neil. There's a reason behind it. And they're talking about police brutality as it relates to minorities. First and foremost, A, recognize it. Had a lot of time spent in Chicago. I understand it's a real problem here in the country. My whole point, and I kind of pointed it out with Coach Mather, and I'm going to say it again just to be very, very clear. I do not believe you should kneel for the national anthem. Colin Kaepernick was kneeling for police brutality. The message has been lost. The players don't know why they're kneeling. I'm sorry. Stand for the national anthem. There needs to be major public discussion on police brutality as it relates to people of color. But the national anthem is not the place to be doing it, and the message has been lost. Most of the players, quite honestly, don't even get it. And I will just leave it at that. But I salute what uh, Coach Mather did and his players. Hey, kudos for you guys. Bring a little bit of sanity back to the uh, the topic, that's for sure. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show. We appreciate it. If you missed any of it, please feel free to listen to it uh, in our archives at highschoolfootballamerica.com. For now, this is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports, and enjoy this weekend's games. You've been listening to the High School Football America radio show from Southern California. I'm Jeff Fisher. I'll talk to you next week.